ABC Action News here with Dr. Bob Wallace, who's going to be talking about hepatitis A and the epidemic we had this last year and the fact that the cases are continuing to go up right now. And we're also going to talk about hepatitis B and C, and we're going to talk about the coronavirus, which I think a lot of folks are very concerned about. Right. So thank you for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for having me. So let's first talk about hepatitis A because um, it's still a problem. We had 150 some cases just in January. Right. We had four more people pass away because of the virus already this year. There were 56 deaths last year, thousands of cases. Right. Um, so tell us, first of all, how does somebody know that they have hepatitis A since it's still a problem here in Florida? Well, with hepatitis A, many people do get symptomatic and the symptoms are oftentimes nausea, uh, people can turn yellow, their eyes can turn yellow depending on how sick they get, depending on how badly it affects the liver. But most people it's nausea, discomfort, feeling fatigued, uh, not so much fever, but generally people are just physically ill. Okay, and so once they're ill, obviously they can be contagious, right? So how do they spread the illness? Well, they can actually be contagious for up to two weeks before they get the symptoms. Oh, wow. So that's where people tend to, to spread the virus. The virus is basically spread through feces. It's basically spread from people who don't wash their hands. Okay. And one of the things that people need to know is that the alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizers do not kill the virus. Oh, you wow. need to wash your hands for a good 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Okay, that's good advice. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we can I can share um, our page as well so that um, other people can see it also on my page because I can't see the questions as of yet. Um, but let's talk also about the fact that, um, you know, a lot of people didn't even know a lot of the restaurants and the grocery stores where there were infected workers because the state has really said we can't release that information because of a statute in the law. I know you don't have to talk about that, right. but um, I think it's important to talk about the fact that a lot of people don't know necessarily when they go out to eat that maybe a worker has hepatitis A and the state's not telling us about it. So how do you protect yourself? There's a vaccine, right? There is a vaccine. It's, it's a two-step vaccine. You take the first one. The second one is given six months later. It could be taken any time after that. Okay. But it's six months between the first and second injection. Now, the health department used to be giving that out for free, but they're not any longer. Okay. The only people who can get the second vaccine for free is people who had the first one before January of this year. So that's the Pinellas County Health Department. Okay, but not all the other counties have that rule. I mean, I think each one, because a I lot of the, folks who are watching in Manatee or Hillsboro or, you know, um, even Sarasota, I mean, there were other counties that had an issue with hepatitis A. Each of them tend to have their own, own practices rules. Yes. and their own rules. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I am um, trying to, sh let me, sh okay, real quick, let me just share this to my page so that folks can watch if they're on my page. Okay, that's done. And now I'm gonna try to get some questions. Oh, wait, hold on, stand by. Um, so we're talking about hepatitis A if you're just tuning in now. Um, and so a lot of folks are watching and I think it's important to ask questions. So if you have a question about hepatitis A, hepatitis B or C, and also the coronavirus, which we're gonna touch on, please um, go on Facebook Live as you continue to watch and ask your question and I will read it aloud and so Dr. Bob can answer it for you. So let's talk about the differences between hepatitis A, B and C. Each is a different virus. Each has its own behaviors. The hepatitis A is generally a, a short-lived illness. Most people are well and pretty much recovered within two months. It could be up to six months. Hepatitis B is a virus that actually becomes part of the genome of the individual who's infected. It's something called uh, covalently close circular or CCC DNA. That's way too many words in one that I could even repeat. <laughs> it does. It gets inserted into the genome of the cells. So right. the cells become factories for hepatitis B. We don't cure hepatitis B. People go into a remission state, but they can be reactivated. You see commercials on television for the newer drugs, the biologics, that they can trigger a flare of hepatitis B. So we need to know about hepatitis B before we start people on other treatment, including treatment for hepatitis C. Okay, so have you seen a higher number of cases in hepatitis B or C in this area? Hepatitis B, there are about 800,000 people um, with a virus, about 80,000 people a year get infected with hepatitis B. So in, it's 
been predominantly in the Asian culture, but we have it in the United States as well. Okay. So um, let's also talk about um, the treatment for mm -hmm. both. Can you help someone with hepatitis B or C? Well, hepatitis A, the, the treatment is just fluids, making sure you allow the liver to recover. With hepatitis B, the symptoms can last even longer. It takes a while to develop the antibodies that are necessary to fight the virus off. And people can be very sick with hepatitis B and thousands of people actually die from hepatitis B as well. Hepatitis C is different in that it is a blood to blood contact virus. Okay. So you need a direct contact with blood. Let's also talk about again, a little bit more detail with hepatitis A. I'm curious to know whether or not um, if, because we've talked, we talked a lot about it last year, especially when it was an epidemic, but can it live on surfaces? So if there's a host at a restaurant who doesn't wash her, her his hands well, has hepatitis A, touches the menu, you touch the menu, you rub your eyes, you put your hands in your mouth, you're eating chips and salsa, whatever it is, mm -hmm. can you get it that way? Can it live on a surface? It can live on a surface. Okay. And how is it transferred? You said not washing hands, but so basically, can it be a microscopic amount that's transferred? It is, and it's hand to mouth. So when people haven't washed their hands, they're gonna contaminate themselves. So oftentimes it can be at a restaurant where you're sitting down and you don't wash your hands right before you eat. Or handing a menu, which is a, you right. know, a good scenario. Right, right. Um, really, or, or what if the person is a dishwasher at a restaurant and they have hepatitis A and then they're transferring it to a fork, a knife, a spoon, right, a plate, they're putting away clean dishes, right. again, without washing their hands. Right, that's an important thing to consider as well. Sure, so um, how long do you think it can live on a surface? That, I'm, I don't, don't have know. the exact don't fact okay. of the hepatitis A. Hepatitis C can actually live on a surface for up to three weeks. Oh, wow. And hepatitis C can live in a syringe for up to 63 days, which is one of the things about people who are injecting drugs, they get new needles, but they use the works that may have been shared by other people and the virus is already in the syringe. So it's easily passed from one to another. So hepatitis C is becoming a, an epidemic as well, and it has been for a while, and it's related to the opioid crisis. Um, people who get hooked on opioids end up snorting drugs. Mm -hmm. When you snort drugs with other people, that is a risk factor for hepatitis C. And as we know, and the opioid crisis hit Florida very, very hard. So that makes sense that, of course, these hepatitis viruses are connected to the opioid crisis because especially here in Florida, right. a lot of folks um, struggled with it. We saw many counties having high numbers of opioid deaths, especially. Right, hepatitis B can certainly be passed by intravenous, sharing intravenous um, works. Mm -hmm. What are the, works. what are the, um, the high, I, I would say the, the categories, especially with hepatitis A, if folks need to be aware of who, who are most at risk of getting hepatitis A? Hepatitis A can affect anyone. Um, it's one of the things that we do know that people who are immunocompromised for any reason can be a, a source or more receptive to the viruses in terms of getting infected with A, B, or C. Okay. So the immunocompromised are people that need to be careful. It can affect any generation. It tends not to affect children. Uh, it tends to be more adults and older adults. And as we've learned um, over the last year, actually children are already being vaccinated now at an early age for hepatitis A. Correct. It's one of the new vaccines that they've, I think, changed, I think, in 2012. Because I know when I looked at my daughter's... 2012. Yeah, in my daughter's um, vaccine, she had yep. the hepatitis A vaccine when she was, you know, a baby, whatever. I think it was within the first year. And hepatitis C started in the late 80s, early 90s. Wow. That people were getting vaccinated as infants. Okay. We do have some questions here. Um, so... What will happen if you don't get that second hepatitis A shot? That's a good question, Julia. Um, thank you for your question. Because the booster comes six months after the first one. What right. if you go, I forgot about it, or oh no, it's been seven months, or I didn't get it at all? Some people will develop enough antibody that they're protected, but you definitely want the second injection to boost that antibody that was started with the first injection. Okay, but um, if you don't get if you don't get it, you may not be protected. Vaccine. Okay, so you really you need to protected. get it. You need to get that second vaccine. What if it's longer than six months? What if it's eight months and you go, oh no, I didn't get the booster. Is it, really, it still okay? It's still okay. Okay, it's so it does, okay. it's not like the six month is, you just have to wait at least six months. At least months six months before you get take the second, the second injection. Okay, so um, let's see what else. How about I say usually spreads with a person on knowing? Okay, so I'm reading about, um, oh, okay. 
Talk about caring for someone in a nursing home who might have hepatitis A or who may spread it. I would think nursing homes and hospitals especially had quite a few cases because it is easily spread. You're all so it is, touching the same things, right? And, and changing diapers on the elderly, you're sure. certainly going to put a bigger risk. Um, hand washing is not going to be as easily done in many of the <sighs> nursing homes because it's not, they're not accessible to soap and water. Right. They're getting used, they're using the hand sanitizers, which is what I made the point earlier, is that doesn't kill the virus. And that's really important to know because I think a lot of folks, I mean, I know I'm at a dinner table, the first thing I do is pull out my sanitizer, right? right? right. If I'm gonna eat some bread. Right. Because I think, oh, well, that'll kill everything. But yep. apparently it doesn't. It doesn't. So you have to have hot, hot water and soap. You need soap, soap. Wa soapy water, right. warm water and soap. Okay, um, so again, somebody's asking about the symptoms of hepatitis A. Let's go over those again. Well, many people will begin to feel nauseated early on in the illness. Uh, as the illness advances, the liver starts to fail and people will get jaundice, which is the yellow pigment that people will see and the eyes will look yellow or the skin can look orange. The stool will be clay colored. The urine will be very dark. You know there's something wrong when you start seeing your excretions. Mm -hmm. So it's the type of thing that, that those are the symptoms that come up that usually lead people to get help. There's not a treatment that will help you other than just avoiding fats, avoiding meat, sticking with fruits and vegetables and juices just to keep yourself hydrated during that time period. And usually it's about two weeks that people will be sick, but it can be six months that people will still feel ill. Wow, and let's talk about what it does to the body, because I think a lot of folks are very scared about hepatitis A when they hear it, and it's been an epidemic, and, and you know they know, it, they know it's contagious, and, but what if you get it? What does it do to the body? Because I've heard some people say they, they might need a liver transplant, right. um, because it does affect the liver, right? Is that it what it goes after? It affects the liver. The, the virus is specifically to the liver cells. So when you see the liver get infected, the people who are at risk are people who have other comorbidities, um, people with HIV, for example, people who are immunocompromised from some other reason, mm -hmm. um, or the older population who just can't recover. Alcohol and people who are alcoholic, who have alcoholic liver disease, are at greater risk of dying if they get hepatitis A. But the general healthy person who gets hepatitis A, it's gonna be a self-limited illness <sighs> and it doesn't reach a chronic carrier state. And how do they treat it? You basically with just fluids. Just fluids? Yep. There's so you no go medication. into the hospital, there's no medications, there's not a they fix. Can, they can give you treatment for nausea. They can use drugs like Zofran or Finergan or some of the older drugs that we've used to help the nausea. Right. So you can definitely treat those symptoms and you can get hydration, intravenous hydration if necessary. So people who are hospitalized, that is the treatment. Okay. Um, and the main thing is really encouraging everybody to get vaccinated. It's available to us and it's something that's effective. Well, that's the first thing I did when I heard about it because let's be honest, we live in Florida. We all, most of us go out to eat right. um, and, or even at the grocery store because there were grocery store workers right. who also had hepatitis A and if they're dealing at the deli or what have you or they're packaging meats, it's, it can be spread through, it's a foodborne illness, right? So it can be it spread through, through food. food. So I just thought I'm not gonna stop going out to eat, right? I'm not gonna stop I'm not going to just, you know, grow my own farm and never go to a grocery store again, right? <laughs> right. So how do you protect ourselves is to get a vaccine. So I think yep. it's, you make a really good point, which is you have to get the vaccine and oftentimes um, your health insurance will cover it too. They will cover it. Yeah. Medicaid and Medicare will cover it as well. My health insurance covered it as well. Yep. And they don't cover a lot of things, but they right. do cover that. Right. <laughs> it is something, it, it's, you know, it became a public health emergency. Uh, as of the summer of last year. And when you see a public health emergency, it raises a lot more red flags that you're sure. gonna get people really involved and try to get them taking care of themselves. All right, so let's talk about the, um, I'm looking to see if there are any more specific questions to hepatitis A, and then we'd like to talk about um, the coronavirus too, because I think a lot of folks are very concerned about that right now. Um, so, um, well, I don't know if that's, they were saying, um, getting hepatitis A from raw oysters. That was my next thing I was gonna talk about is when you're dealing with bottom feeders, those are the, the organisms and those are the items that are at risk. Lobsters, um, oysters, 
muscles. Is that how you plans. got hepatitis A? I got hepatitis A from swimming in a contaminated lagoon in Hawaii. Oh, wow. So right. it's possible even through a contaminated lagoon, you can, right. how does it get into your system? Through the eyes, through the nose? Getting in through the mouth. In the mouth, through the mouth. Yep. So and it, can't, it can be passed through raw oysters. Yes, that's, that is a very common thing that will happen. Wow. Um, the epidemic that occurred in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Kentucky was taken back and um, found to be from oysters that had been brought in that were contaminated with hepatitis A. It's interesting, too, because I was even reading that, I remember, again, last year we were doing a lot of recalls with product that had hepatitis A, including even cooked recall, like bakeries. I think it was chocolate chip cookies that had hepatitis mm -hmm. A or blueberries mm -hmm. that had hepatitis A. How does it make its way that far in, even after being baked or cooked or what have you? It, it's, it's a very strong virus in terms of its ability to survive. Viruses are, are made and they are, viruses are not made. I'm sorry, I don't mean to say viruses are made, but viruses have the capability of being strong and getting stronger. They mutate constantly. So that's why it's hard to develop vaccines for a, va for a, a virus like hepatitis C. Hepatitis C constantly changes its protein coat. The thing with the coronavirus now, it's already being discovered that there will be a possibility of a vaccine for, for the coronavirus, and there are people already working on that. Okay. Um, I think uh, I'm just looking again at, um, oh, as people are saying there's shots for free at Publix. I know CVS is also Correct. offering hepatitis A shots as well. Correct. Um, so you shouldn't have a problem finding the hepatitis you A You should still vaccine. be able to find a vaccine for yes, free. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm looking through to see what other, um, what other questions we can answer. I, I, I think also somebody asked me this the other day and I didn't have the answer for it. How did, how did, how did hepatitis A come to our area? Like, how did it become such an epidemic so quickly? It's not really clear, clear why our area was the focal point. There's a question about warm waters, whether or not that's a greater risk, uh, particularly things like oysters and mussels and lobsters. So you're, you're considering environmental factors as maybe a reason that we saw them um, because the, the epidemic that occurred up in the central part of the country started in the winter time as well, but that's why it was unusual. Mm. It tends to be in warmer areas. Interesting. Um, and I want to answer Terry Davis's question because we just went over this. She said, is there a place to get the vaccine at a low cost? She doesn't have insurance. And Terry, as we were discussing, some places even offer it for free. Some of the health departments, I think, still do, depending on, I know the first shot, not the second shot, right. the booster, but the first shot. So you may want to check with your local county health department Department because they may already be offering it or especially if you're if you have a compromised immune system I would think even your doctor might be able to offer it at a lower Correct. cost anyway Correct. right and most health insurance coverage does they, the whole health insurance does cover it but Correct. not all she said she doesn't have health insurance but certainly I would think um, you know someone could offer her at a lower rate um, well, it's, it's difficult for private practices to be able to maintain vaccines because they expire it's hard to get reimbursement from the insurance companies. So the doctors that are giving out vaccines are doing their patients a really great service. Absolutely. And we don't, we don't always see doctors being able to do that. But the, the cost at the health department right now is $70 for the vaccine, unless you have a coupon or unless you have um, a financial situation that they can give you a reduced price and it's $15. Wow, so that's much more reasonable, I Correct. think, for a lot of folks out there. Um, really great question here. Steven is asking, what is the chance of catching it, say, at the airport? Um, because I think a lot of people, I mean, anytime you're you're in an area where a lot of folks travel through, mm -hmm. you're touching, you know, a lot of the same railings and what have you. Right. Is it that contagious that you could get it at the airport? It, it's generally not going to stay on a surface that long. It's, it's more often a food borne or as, as in the case of my infection, it was a water borne in a lagoon that mm -hmm. we, we realized was contaminated. There were nine of us who went swimming and six of us came down with hepatitis A. Wow. So you know it was the water. It we wasn't it was just, that, yeah. That particular well, I was going to say, or you go out to eat at the airport and someone, right. a, and worker, some, a food worker has a food it worker at, the at the airport. But I think, um, I think the whole idea about um, faucets, those are things to think about because right. if people haven't really washed their hands and they're handling the faucets, if you're there just after someone has been there, you're going to be at risk. That's an interesting point. Or like a lot of people we see, they wash their hands so carefully 
they dry them and then they grab the handle door, the door handle, handle and then you've just contaminated it, yep. right? Or yep. I tease my daughter all the time because then she's putting her hands on the seat on the table and, and I was like, you're just contaminating, you've just washed your hands, but now you've taught, or the ketchup bottle or the salt and pepper bottle, right. you know, I mean, it's, I mean, and it's not just hepatitis A, I've been or the anything. remote control. <laughs> yeah, or the, right, well, that, yeah, especially if right. you travel and, you know, got to wipe down everything before right. you go. I'm just looking to see, is this an airborne issue? Wendy Connolly is asking that. And I think the answer is no, right? Not for hepatitis A. It's going to be a more direct hand-to-mouth um, infection. Okay. Now, with the coronavirus is another whole story because that is something that is airborne. People are getting it from sneezing and coughing in groups, but it generally requires a fairly long period of, of exposure near the person who's infected. You're not going to get it with the first sneeze or the first cough. Right, however... But if you're with someone who's, who's coughing continuously and you're on an airplane, I was just going to say an airplane. You're, or a cruise you're, ship, because we saw so many people right. affected, and now all these new cases, they were on that same cruise ship. Correct. So that is where, and I would think, you know, anywhere you're in a, a closed environment, a movie theater even too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I could see how if you've got someone who's coughing next to you, it's a good mm -hmm. chance that you could, especially you're spending three hours, right? Right next to someone. Well, and, and the, the other hard part about this, this is our flu season. So people are coming in with influenza. Right. Uh, fortunately, the, the emergency rooms and many of the clinics have the opportunity to do the test and show whether you have influenza or not. Right. So that's, you know, influenza is another whole topic to discuss. We're, sure. We've had more deaths from influenza than we've had worldwide from the coronavirus yet um, this year, or this last season during the 19, or 2019, 2000, 2020 season. So let's talk about the coronavirus for a moment, because I think sure. a lot of folks are, are really worried about it since it's obviously all over, globally and it's all over the country now our numbers are going up we have 50 some just in the united states now again a lot of them came from that cruise ship right but that doesn't mean as we know just like the hepatitis a epidemic it can quickly multiply so if someone has some symptoms out there what would you be most concerned about to say maybe you should go get tested for the coronavirus if you have fever and coughing those would be the two first things that uh, as you notice, they're checking the temperatures of everyone coming through because fever is one of the first signs or first symptoms that people will have influenza. Muscle aches, feeling tired, feeling fatigued, uh, a sudden onset. Those are the things that are more concerning when you see a virus like the coronavirus because if you've already exposed 50 people, um, how are we gonna track down all 50 of those people? And I think the, the uh, just in Italy, they're trying to identify patient one, patient zero, and it's gonna be very hard for them to do that. Right, so, um, and, and unlike, I think, hepatitis C and a lot of it, it doesn't, it doesn't live on a surface, right? So these people at the ship, they all get it, but it's been in the it's, air. It's been airborne, airborne from people who have carried it. And the, the interesting thing is the original coronavirus is derived from bats. Bats are the carriers, they infect animals. Animals then infect other animals. Animals can then, it can mutate and become a human virus. And not all viruses will then be passed from human to human, but this one is. Um, so that's making it more fearful for a lot of people. And you're finding that surgical masks are just not available right now. Mm, right. Um, there are people in the United States that are making surgical masks that are being shipped to China, which has never happened right. um, because they're out. Right, they're, they're out sold out. Cause it's, it's, and, and really we need them here too in case Correct. this does become an epidemic. Correct. Hope not, but we do need them here we just do. in case. All right, Dr. Bob Wallace, thank you so much for your time here and sharing your sure. knowledge. I think there's a lot of folks out there who have um, a lot of questions and I think you've answered many of them tonight. So thank we you. So. And I also wanna um, say that tonight at 11 on ABC Action News, we are really going in depth into this and I'm also gonna be talking to the Surgeon General about why so many cases were kept a secret, thousands of cases kept a secret and the deaths kept a secret. Um, because of a statute in the law. That's coming up tonight on ABC Action News at 11. You'll hear from the Surgeon General and you'll hear from a lot of folks who are very worried about the hepatitis A epidemic and the continual cases that we see right now.